All right, my friends, today is March the 31st, or for the majority of you, it will be April the 1st by the time you're watching this. We just had a massive close. That is the official end of Q1 and the beginning of Q2 for 2024. I always make a significant note around the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, and same with quarterly closes and opens. Generally, you will see a either significant shift in flows or a resurgence and continuation in what you had previously seen. Um, so I always wanna focus when the quarter shifts over um, so I can try to identify uh, individual performance because the hands are normally shown pretty early in the quarter. If you're interested in gaining access to the spaghetti template and learning how to properly utilize it, you should consider joining the Paragon group. Let's go ahead and get into some Bitcoin macro talk. First thing that I want to talk about is the happening. It's 20 days away. Pretty wild that it looks like it's going to happen on 420. Pretty just, you know, classic, classic crypto, right? We love our meme levels and numbers and stuff. So why wouldn't this major event happen on a meme day? So I just think that's hilarious. So definitely be aware of the fact that that's coming up very soon. It's like 20 days and 15 hours away. Um, last I checked. So coming up really soon here. Let's go ahead and talk about the Bitcoin plans though. As far as how our time frame goes, nothing has changed. We'll go ahead and just rehash everything to a quick TLDR. As far as the two main plans go, they both are bullish, right? So I still on high time frame am super bullish. No reason to think otherwise. The two main plans though that we have are either seeing momentum, you know, initiation right into the beginning of Q2. So we just kind of leg up and take off from here. Or the other scenario is the more boring choppy summertime that we've talked about. Either of these are, to you know, totally plausible. I think that the first like week of Q2 will be really indicative of how this is going to play out. If we are looking for the more choppy Q2, then that's us losing 69K and probably putting in another higher low within this range that we're developing. I'll cover this stuff a little bit more in detail when we get to the medium time frame. but essentially, you know, dips are still for buying. You want to be identifying individual sectors that are performing well and, you know, like don't be bearish. I don't really see any reason to be shorting anything. The only reason to short anything at all is if you want to protect your long exposure without closing it out. I think that that's you know, a justifiable argument if that's what you want to do. I've, you know, this entire trend, I've only put on a couple of hedges the whole way through and I don't really intend to be putting on a lot. So yeah, I mean, it really is simple guys right now. Either we're about to see momentum really return, which the argument for that is somewhat valid, which we'll clarify that on medium time frame here soon enough, or we get the more boring choppy summertime. If we get the choppy summertime, I'll use that as an opportunity to probably go on vacation, totally content with either scenario. But in at the end of it all, I think that we're gonna end up trading higher at the end of this year, right? I think that we're gonna be a lot higher across the board over the next, you know, six months or so. Hit me in the questions if there's anything that's confusing about the high time frame plan. I think that it's all pretty straightforward. First thing that we'll identify is the macro composite structure. We can call it a macro comp now because it's over a month old or slightly over a month old now. Um, so anything beyond like two weeks, I normally move away from standard comp and, and we'll define it as a macro comp. Macro comp high has shifted up a bit. So it's almost at 73K now. It's at 72.6 or 72.7. Um, the macro composite low is at 64.1K, right? Um, so something to pay attention to is the value has been shifting up. Um, there was a while where the composite high was in the 71K region and it shifted up as price has been slowly drifting up. Um, so that's pretty bullish. One of the other things that I wanted to discuss is that obviously um, we can very clearly see that this range that we're building um, has roughly equal highs and has can, you know, consecutively higher lows across the board. So we're building just a massive triangle, which is one of the best things that we can see for high time frame. is that we're just building, you know, anytime you see that that kind of structure, and this is my favorite triangle, right? Where you have consecutive high, equal highs or roughly equal highs, and then the lows are higher over time. That's just price compressing. And that leads to massive, you know, explosions upward generally, right? So we love that we're seeing that. The other thing that we wanted to point out, that's why I'm calling it the triangle meme inception, is that we have a triangle meme developing right here as well. That same type of structure where we have roughly equal highs and the higher lows across the board. So we're getting a little bit of blood as we get into the you know start of the quarter, which is totally fine. So if we see something like this and then bounce back, that could be a absolutely a trigger to see um, a lot of momentum kind of return to the market right in the first week of Q2. So that's what kind of what I'm hoping happens. Um, and, you know, I guess it's always important to point out that market doesn't give a shit about what I want to happen, but that would be absolutely beautiful if that was the case. If that's not the case, 
and we don't immediately kind of just bounce from this region and we do bleed further, then we're probably looking at like this kind of region. So anywhere from like 68 all the way down to 65. Um, on the high time frame chart, 65K is where I would target. But when we look at the medium time frame, it looks like we wouldn't trade that low and we'd probably be looking at like 67K. So I'd probably stick out my stick my neck out on the line and say 67K is the main area to pay attention to instead of 65K. Um, just because the, the overlaps are definitely more significant um, for this reason. So that's pretty much it for the medium time frame. The range that we're building is super bullish. It has all the signs that I want to see. And um, it just really kind of depends on what the New York session flows are going to be like. So I've said that a lot recently. You want to pay attention to what the London flows are like and what the New York session flows are like. So let's go ahead and get into the altcoin conversation now. First one that I'm obviously going to cover is Solana. I'm obviously, as you guys are you know, well aware, I'm super horned up on this and um, expecting us to trade a lot higher. So this structure on medium time frame is looking super bullish. Let's go to the high time frame chart super quickly. Like we had talked about, we wanted to see 175 hold of support. So that was resistance that got flipped into support. And I mean, like, what more can you say? This looks like a classic kind of breakout play. I've said more than once, I don't care about any of the supply that's up here. Sure, we'll probably get some fuckery up in like the 240, 250 region when we get close to the all-time high, but I don't think that any of that's going to hold us back in any meaningful way. And I'm really expecting to see Solana trade up towards like the 400 region, like no joke. So um, it wouldn't surprise me if like Solana over the next like month or two just like went up 100%. Um, this looks really, really hot. If there are any like pullbacks towards a, the, like 180 or something like that, I mean, that's the risk definition that you're looking for. So I might even buy, I might buy more Solana spot, honestly, if that was the case. Um, the other one that I want to cover, my favorite, you guys are probably tired of hearing me talk about it, Dogecoin. We have been waiting for the 18 cent or 19 cent kind of region to get broken, which was holding its resistance. And it, we finally smashed through it. Do I think that this is just going to just like eat up, you know, without pulling back more? Like, no, it could probably do another pullback. And if it pulls back towards like 20 or 19 cents, like those are the areas where you want to be looking to, to pack on more risk probably. So if, if Doge does a significant pullback, I'm going to be buying that up. Um, and probably trying to add on more exposure. But like the, basically the TLDR is that if it pulls back towards like monthly, you know, previous quarterly kind of value areas, then you want to buy it up. And I think that it can probably trade up all the way towards like 35 cents is the next kind of target. 35 cents or 34 cents rather is the next like macro resistance on this. So I think that it's just a matter of time before it trades up here. Sure, th this will be a sticky point where it will struggle to get through that. Um, beyond that, I think like $1 will be a significant resistance. And then, you know, the, the classic 169 meme as well. So um, very, very optimistic on this. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So good luck this week. And uh, I'll see you guys out there. Cheers.